Hey, I'm Kev Kev, I'm a Sakura. welcome back to MotoGP 17. As after a very successful outing in Catalonia, we're heading to the TT Circuit Assen in the Netherlands. And here we are around this historic track, doing a qualifying effort with Dan McDonald, who had a superb outing in Catalonia. And of course, we're looking to repeat that form here around Assen has let's talk you around a lap of this circuit which has changed a lot over the years but this is its current configuration for about the last decade now it's the first corner such a tricky braking zone but there's some camber to help you get into that corner if you brake early enough get it down to second gear flat out kink and then another heavy braking zone down to second gear for the first right hander and then an even tighter right hander comes up be careful of that curb on the inside and then a tight hairpin down to first. One of the tightest hairpins on the calendar. But now we can have some fun as we build the speed up down this bendy back straight for a couple of fast, high speed kinks. As we get up to fifth gear over 130 miles per hour. First kick is flat out in these motor three bites, but the second kick you do have to let up, taking it in fourth gear. And then another tricky braking zone down to second gear. And you've got to be careful the back end coming out if you've got. A more powerful bike with you, but on the most motor three bikes, it is just about getting it into the apex. And then the left hander down to second gear. Again, be careful of that curb on the inside. And now the double right hander from hell. Get it down to second gear, and this is going to be extremely tricky on the MotoGP bikes. Got to be careful of the back end kicking out, especially if those tyres are praying on that final lap of the race. Then a flat out kink. On these motor three bikes, you know, there's not as much to worry about in these fast corners. Flat out, and the kicks then down to the left hander. Very tricky braking as it is at high speed, and you've got the carry speed through there. And then the final chicane where we've seen some incidents over the years. Rossi Marquez, Hayden Edwards. We've yeah, seen some majestic finishes, Assen. And that was a pretty good lap, I feel. 51 flat. Let's see where, where it leaves us on the grid. Will it be in our favourite 13th side spot? We will not be as Mir is once again on pole on that Leopard. 48 to ahead of his championship rival, Kenneth, with Martin making an all Spanish front row. There's an all Italian second row, and McPhee's upsetting the all Italian third row. What are you doing in seventh? But where are we? We're 19th. We're not even to the top Peugeot. We're three tenths of a second behind Kornfeld. As we do beat the top Mahindra though of Della Portia in 20th. So we're back on the seventh row of the grid. Well, of course, my teammate is back on the last row of the grid, but he's not last again by 55 thousandths of a second. But can we go forward in the race and score some more points? So here we are in the garage doing our final preparations before this race it is going to be a very tricky race with as you see some high speed corners we're going to lose out in those but you can see lots of breaking zones as well where we can actually make up some time uh sticking further back there's rodrigo again in 12th going for teeth and effectively his home race there's cornfield in 17th there is blue still in 19th but suzuki joined us on the seventh row we've got Bo and herrero together on the ninth row and then looking at the back row there is magnum ahead of the Finnish teenager. And so we're waiting on the grid, doing our final checks and preparations. Oh, look at that. That's Kanet looking very focused on the front row. And that's what we're looking at at the start. Those lights to appear and go out. As the flags are raving heavily on the left-hand side in the grandstand. And we are away for the six lap race. We've got a decent start. And then immediately move to the inside. But someone got a slow start in front. Up into 18. Now we've got to be careful this breaking zone. He's the bite towards the apex. And we'll make another position up. Up into 17. Very good start here on the Peugeot. And we're going to be diving it down the inside here. As these, this first sector is our sector. These slow corners. Not able to make any moves on the inside, so let's go all oh, to the outside as we get into someone. And we've got a good exit from the corner. As you saw in Magello as well, straight line speed could sometimes actually be decent. 
It's in the search stream of the Spanish rider, Guerrero. Approaching these fast kinks. And oh, we're getting attacked from behind by the Japanese rider. Oh, and that's forced us right into the left. And now, we, now we've lost all our positions. Back down to 20th. So not a very good fast couple of kinks there. It's from behind Daryl Binder. The younger Brinda brother. The one with his hair everywhere. Oh, we shove our way by into 90. Definitely going to be stuck in this midfield back. Oh, this race. As here comes Binder back by into the right-hander. And then we take him back as he runs just an inch off line. We've got the momentum. Going flat out. Oh, up into 18. I'm going to be doing that in real life. Hitting your opponent there. There's a nicking down the inside of Guerrero. And oh, had to back out of it. That's forced us onto the dirt. And here comes Binder again. Oh my God, what are you doing, Daryl Binder? Extraordinary outbreaking maneuver. Taking two guys. Because Bodega does have passed out the race with a 50.2. We're hanging it out back here. Oh, hit down the inside of Guerrero. That first corner, we're not getting outbreak it. Outbroken. Even. Or outbreak, shall we say. We're definitely going to try and make for some positions into that first corner. As we get past Guerrero, finally. I like I've been trying that for uh, that. As we've got Binder and the Japanese rider up into the points. As is that Danilo in the middle, it is the Frenchman. Our rival from the Circuit of the Americas. He's enjoying his time ahead of us, but of course we want to change that. A slight lift into that first left. That was much better. The first right, now into the left. Much better sequence of corners there on the first lap. Oh, and easing it into the back of Danilo. Get out of here. We're renewing our rivalry in Aston. Driving down the inside of the French rent. He had to turn out the corner. Oh, so that Japanese rider in front's on a charge past the Malaysian rider of Nuruddin. Up into 14th, and here comes Danilo again. Oh, and here comes Guerrero. Oh, he's pushing us wide. The Spanish ride is so aggressive. Just as we thought we were clear of him, he's pushed us back, and now we've got someone else charging down our inside. Oh, we've been forced out wide. We're still going, though, in 20th. Got the inside line as well into the chicane. And we're trying to do what Binder did on the previous lap. We do up into 17. Deftly cautious into that final chicane. As that was Suzuki challenging us. But we're up into 17. Got Binder just in front. And oh, here comes Guerrero pushing us wide, the Spanish rider. We've got our rival for this race. That's on the third lap of it now. Look at that, those points tantalizingly in front. Let's connect us a fast out of the race, 47-7. We're going to be nowhere near that. Let's get out of here, Guerrero. Got to force him wide and force ourselves wide. But we're up into 17. Aggressive manoeuvre, but it looks like we have to be aggressive against him in this race. As you bring us a second in front, we're losing that slipstream in front for these straights. So we've got to make it up in the next couple of corners and flat out in that way. And oh, here comes Guerrero again. Madman! What did he have for breakfast? Into that left-hander. If there's one thing you can say about the opponents in this game, they're aggressive. Incredibly. It's like some of them have a death wish. As all the Japanese riders now drop him back in front. Is that Sasaki? Is that how you say it? Back down to 16, but there goes Garavan and it down the inside in that right hander. But I might compromise him. The rest of the straight. No, it wasn't Guerrero. It was the Italian, I believe. That is. A Bolino. As so we keep it in clear. Trying to hook up this left hander. Very slow. So we've got to be careful to dive bomb into the chicane. Thankfully it didn't come though. That seems to be a corner where we're getting fantastic breaking. And it's like Guerrero tried a cheeky move as well into that final chicane. As Sasaki's back past Nora Din back into the points ahead. 
It's all oh, Guerrero trying to dive bomb. That's so halfway through this race. We've also got Binder still there back in his front. We're definitely gaining for this final point. Just because we're not battling, not compromising ourselves so much. Plus, it's his first sector where we're very good, as you can see. Look at that on the back of the three. The battling trio in front. And talking about battling trios, and it's like we've got a battle at the front. Mir and Kanet battling. And it's like Suzuki's getting involved in that battle behind. And we're stuck in the middle. Pushing as hard as we can. In fourth gear there. Oh, that's much better. Now second, taking a shower line there. It works on these Moto3 bikes. I'm not so sure with the more powerful bikes there. As I said, the back end on my qualifying app will kick out on those bikes. Let's hear on right behind Nuruddin. Got Sasaki, got Binder right in front. Got battles all over us. Did they just go through someone? I've seen that with this game. Do riders just go through them now <laughs> at times? But uh, opponents, is that just to prevent them, you know, bashing each other out in every corner? As you see with the aggression, it's like a compromise, is it? If someone actually does know, you know, of course, tell me in the comment section below. But we're looking to the outside here, got a superb run out of that left hander. Going outside, Binder, are we? We've got a point. Pass Sasaki, pass through it in. Behind the South African as it gone to Benalto at the of the race, 47-9. Very good that time. Looking down the inside of Binder, not quite the gap there as you've got Loy and Rodrigo battling in front for 12. And I'm saying at this cautious moment, they're not out of reach. Oh, Binder's holding that line superbly. Looking round the outside here of the South African. But his hair is forcing us wide. It's so magnificent. We can't make it round it. They've got a superb slipstream. Yes, yeah, slipstream on the purge. As I said, Magello, we seem to have found something in a straight line. We've got it once again. There's no easily pass before the right hand king. Now into the left. Up into 14. See, once we're not battling, we've got good lap times once again in the race. Such a difference from the top difficulty where we're just clinging on race pace wise, we're perhaps a second slower, but on this difficulty we're right there. Considering what considering how good our bike is, and considering how good I am at this game as I run magnificently wide, with it and binder through. But we're trying to get the run out of the corner. Into the right hand kink. Oh! We needed big balls there. And Blue still definitely had them. The McKidd is charging in the second half of this race. He can see 12th right in front. Top 10 out of reach, but there's a trio in front. And if you're going to break into the last corner like that on the final lap, we'll be out of reach as unfortunately it's short shifted the third. They killed the momentum out of the corner. Let's maybe going to allow Bin to have a look down our inside into the first corner. As the South African duck tries it. We well, just out break him round the outside, but now he's got the momentum through the kink. We're gonna down the inside. Into the right. We're gonna try and hug that apex while he's pushing us wide. And we just about hold on though. So that's a very good hairpin as well, that left hander. And there's the buttoning trio front. Rodrigo just over half a second in front. Binder in our slip stream. And here he comes. Down our inside the South African. But looking round the outside into the left hander. Fantastic battle with the younger Binder brother this race. And all using all of the curb and some. Just about holding on to 14th though. We're now second behind Rodrigo. Just half a second takes to that battling. There we go, a couple of tight corners. Now the final section of the lap where we seem to be pretty strong. So let's hug this apex. We don't want Binder going down our inside. But that's compromised our run out of the corner as you've seen. Uh, Sasaki and Nuruddin are battling for 16th behind. They can still smell a point because we're compromising Binder. 
And now here comes the South African trying to charge. Through these kinks. Oh, gone slightly wide. I need to do another outbreak maneuver into this final chicane to hold on to 40. As Mir wins. Superb job from the Spanish rider from Paul. But can we hold on to 40 and another couple of points? We can! Very happy with that result. Very happy. As you saw in the first half of the race, we were struggling to get out battles and break into that top 15 battle. But once we got three, doing a fantastic battle with Binder. So I hope you really enjoyed that race as much as I did playing it as Mir wins by a couple of tenths of a second from Belega. Upsetting Kenet there, who's down in third. Romano Fanati in fourth. Good result for the Italian. Just ahead of Martin. Then Bastini and we've got the Italian in seventh. Di Gian Antonio in eighth. Otto in ninth. And Tinelli in tenth. Loy in eleventh. Ahead of McPhee, who really dropped in that race. Disappointing race race again for the Scottish rider. With Rodrigo in 13th. And there is the top Peugeot rider in 14th. Ahead of Bindu, who grabbed that final point just ahead of Suzuki. He came out of nowhere in, this, in the second half of the race to finish 16th. As for the other Peugeot, Korn fell down in 27th. Poor race for the Czech rider. And our teammate last. Probably could have predicted that before this race, couldn't I? As Mir retakes the championship lead by 6 points from Kenet. With Belega in for just 22 points back. That Italian is really holding on. This title race, it really is a three horse race as we're approaching our frame mark of this season. We've got Italian fourth, just two points ahead of Martin. Otel in a superb six on the KTM. Bastini seventh, Antonelli eighth. Bernati getting up there in ninth, just three points behind his fellow countryman. But three clinging on to a top ten of DJ Antonio, Loy, and Neres McDonald in 13th, just a point ahead of Rodrigo. That's going to be a fantastic battle as this season progresses. And looking further down, you can see Bose up to 27, but still got no points scored. As 21 riders have scored points. Just two thirds of the field have scored points. And of course, our teammate hasn't. As in the constructor stands, 22 point lead for Honda and KTM. With Bojo in third with another couple of points ahead of Mahindra. Still not off the mark. As we have a lot, Kenny Roberts on 2000 for the slightly over the hill. Kenny Roberts, but still decent as he proved in 2006, has... This is our weekend recap, and a very good weekend recap for Dan McDonald. Started 19th, moved forward in the race to 14th. Well, for Patrick McDonald, he just moved back, and we really got to think of maybe changing him, I feel. As he's not doing much, even though he's been proving his corner once again, it's almost at 50, while well, thought management's at 46 now. He's merged a free affinity, he's at 100. I expect him to get a bit of a boost after it's at 100, but just hasn't come. As we've earned some credits and reputation as well, well deserved from Assen. As now we're around halfway through the season, let's look at the calendar. We've got a couple of free weekends before we head to Assen. Not Assen, we just came from Assen, didn't we? Next time out, as we're halfway through the season, we'll be going to the Saxon Ring, a very unusual circuit on the calendar, but a fantastic track in Germany. And I hope you enjoyed our race in Aston. It was a battle from start to finish. But in the end, I think Dan McDonald definitely won that battle score and another couple of points. And if we can just continue scoring as the season goes on, I think that's our aim. Maybe get some more top tens as well, but we'd be very lucky to get that in Saxon, which has, which has been a circuit that's actually been kind to us in the past, so we might be looking at a top 10 round here, especially in that first sector where it's very tricky, but then the track opens up as it progresses, but I'll talk about that on our qualifying effort next time out. So out for watching, and I will see you then.